All right, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to Rave Culture Podcast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I'm your host, Emma Capotis. Thank you all so much for being here, for tuning in for another week. Uh, we have an awesome episode this week. I am so excited to introduce this guest later today. We've got back to back interviews these past few weeks. I'm kind of loving it, um, having new people on every week, sharing some stories of other ravers, people in the EDM community, companies. Uh, I'm having so much fun doing this, so I hope you guys are liking all of these episodes. Uh, if you are new this week, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. We have a lot of fun over here. Um, I cover everything from music festival tips and advice to just topical content in the EDM community, um, some EDM news, stuff about different artists. I try and recommend things to you guys when I can, uh, do music festival reviews after I attend. Um, different shows and things like that and then yeah anything that sort of like comes up in this industry that's like an interesting topic or something that I think should be discussed or we should have a conversation about that's sort of like my goal for this podcast um, and really just like starting a conversation to talk about the positivity in this community because that's like the biggest thing that the EDM community has given back to me and why I love going to music festivals why I love raving and interacting with people um, is mainly just because of the positive impact that music and EDM has had on my life. So I don't think I say this enough, but that is really why I do this. And for the younger generation coming in, I know I'm only 28, but I just sort of want there to be a place to go to to learn more about this community. Sorry, I'm going to say that word a million times learn more about this scene um, and just really like hear some interesting stories and learn more learn more educate yourself and, and just see like all the different sides about it and how many cool people there are out there so anyway i'll get off my soapbox i'm like literally dying of heat right now you guys <laughs> i have to turn the air conditioning off in my apartment and it's like straight up 90 something degrees in new jersey today um i am fresh back from vacation for those of you who follow me on instagram twitter or youtube um i've talked about it so many times i was just away on vacation in hilton head south carolina with my family i also went to savannah georgia which is one of my absolute favorite cities i love it there so so much typically like to go like once a year and i had my brother my sister-in-law my boyfriend all seven of us in a hotel room and it was such a nice break so i you know thank you guys i hope you enjoyed the content last week i didn't i had a lot of stuff pre-filmed because i didn't want to like miss anything right now i'm like very much hustling and trying to really grow my channel and really grow this podcast um so i didn't stop working but it was so good to just like totally reset refresh come in with like a fresh mine this week and spend that much time with my family in a row um was incredible i swear guys sitting on the beach with a white claw in your hand oh i shouldn't say that name because they don't sponsor this but i'm actually wearing my white claw shirt today wow i'm a millennial aren't i <laughs> anyway uh yeah i just gotta say for all of you guys out there who have a vacation coming up or just went on one i know you guys can relate um but i just feel so like re-energized and refreshed and I was really ready to sort of come back to this electric zoo is coming up. I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But I was ready to just like come back and film. I truly love doing this. I love recording the podcast and you know, I, I feel great. So I'm happy that vacation is under my belt. It was an awesome time, but there's so much to look forward to. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes if you guys are interested. Um, I can't share all of it yet, but there's some really cool things happening. I have a lot of awesome videos. Planned. I'm working with some very cool partners behind the scenes. So just like so many exciting and incredible things are happening and it's because you guys are listening and you're spreading the word. So thank you guys so much for sharing this podcast with your friends, sharing it on social media. I always tell you guys screenshot and share it on your Instagram stories, on your Twitter. Um, you tell a friend today. That's like if I could ask one thing of you guys, like just send it to a friend, tell them to check it out. Um, I appreciate it more than you guys know. And I hope to meet a lot of you as soon as possible. I know Electric Zoo is coming up by the time this comes out. Yeah, next week. Uh, I don't know if I've ever been more excited for a festival. I mean, of course, EDC Las Vegas, but I missed EZU last year. I was away, so it's been two years since I've been back. Uh, it's close to my home. Um, you know, I work in Manhattan, so this is like hometown festival. I have a lot of friends coming. 
a lot of plans. Um, I'm definitely planning a meetup. It's going to be Saturday, but you guys, I'm just waiting on the festival map and the set times to come out. But I promise you I will be blowing up social media once I know exactly like where it's going to be and when. I also might be doing other meetups with other content creators. So yeah, so just look for me throughout the weekend. Um, I'm also recording this on YouTube. Um, if some of you don't know, I have a YouTube channel. It's just under my name, Emma Capotis. Um, but I want to show you guys something so anybody watching on YouTube will see this But I just got in my custom rave flag, which I had been talking about and I wanted to shout out rave flags They're at rave flags on Instagram um, They reached out to me and they were like, hey, you know, would you want a custom flag? And I was like, uh, hell yeah So I got this awesome rave culture podcast flag that I designed. It's so beautiful it's basically like the logo and sort of like what the profile picture looks like but i'm gonna hold it up for youtube really quickly oh it's upside down <laughs> i'm gonna be bringing this to izu so basically the easiest way to find me i'm gonna try and hold this up as much as i can during the sets i'm in i probably will put it down in the crowd so as to not annoy anyone go back and listen to the great festival flag and totem debate episode if you want to hear more about that <laughs> but um no it looks like this hold on one second I'm covering my face right now so everyone can see it. But I absolutely love it. Thank you again at Rave Flags. You guys go check them out. Um, they're awesome. They work with you on like custom designs. So definitely go support them. They're really cool. And they rush ordered me that. So thank you guys so much for doing it. Uh, I seriously like, cannot wait. Now that I have it here in person, I, I'm just like, this is all really happening. It's really weird when you just have like your head down and you're focused. On something and then I get that flag and I'm like holy shit I'm gonna be like flying proudly a flag with my podcast logo on it um yeah it's incredible anyway this intro is so long <laughs> but no I'm so excited for Izu so definitely stay tuned for all of that I'm also gonna be at Imagine Music Festival it's my first time attending that festival I cannot fucking wait for that it's gonna be so good that's in September and what else that's all I've got right now I have a couple shows uh locally in New York that I have coming up but that's the main places you can find me out and about right now. Um, I really quickly want to get into EDM news. I'm sort of going to just like touch on a lot because while I was away, so much happened. And I was sort of like jotting things down on my phone as it was going. So I'm going to touch on a couple major things that happened in the industry within this past week. Um, and then I'm going to introduce my guest. We have an awesome interview today. Is this my first guy on the podcast? I think this might be my first guy interview. So I'm glad um, I'm having one of my friends on here. Uh, I'll introduce him in a bit, but it's a great conversation. I think you guys are really going to like this. He is heavily into the bass music scene, dubstep, rhythm. That is his jam. Uh, such an animated personality. So I think you guys will really, really like that phone call that I'll play in just a few minutes here. But anyway, let's get into EDM news. Wow, I'm really sweating. I hope you guys can see that in the YouTube video. <laughs> okay, number one thing, Elenium dropped his album last week. I'm a huge Elenial. I fucking love him. I think his story is incredible. I love his music. I'm a cry in the club to that all day long. Um, so his album Ascend dropped. Go check it out. Even if you're not the biggest Elenium fan, um, some of the music he has on that album, there were a bunch of singles that were released beforehand. So um, like Pray, Good Things Fall Apart is probably my, might be my favorite song off the album and Crashing. So there's like a couple songs that were released beforehand, but it's truly a work of art. There's some songs in there that'll hit you in the feels. Um, so definitely check him out, support that album. Really excited about it. Um, a few other things. Uh, Mastodon, who is like a, a bass music artist, he's definitely like on the very much like heavier kind of side. He rebranded and changed his name to, I believe it's pronounced Marada, Maruda, I think it's Marada. Um, he announced that he has a whole new logo, so he's now performing under that new name and sort of like launched this as like a new era. So that happened. If anybody's interested in him, I know, I think he's like a younger artist. Sorry, I should do more research before I put this out. <laughs> but no, I did want to touch on it because it's not really like, I'm not super into his type of music, but I did want to touch on it because I want to, you know, have a well-rounded podcast. It's not all house music all the time. Um, what else? Seven Lions. I had to touch on this because this is crazy. He ended up missing his Moonrise set, which sent like shock waves through the fandom obviously because he's such an incredible artist you guys know he's like my favorite artist him and oliver heldens are my top two i can't pick between them i love them both equally 
but um i could not imagine like being at moonrise like waiting for him to come on and then here he had like some travel issues this is how i know he's like a, such a good person jeff um he posted this like long incredible message on facebook just like apologizing saying he like literally hasn't missed a show in years and he takes it so seriously so anyway that really sucked i feel for him and hopefully um, i'm sure obviously he didn't mean for that to happen so anyway but i believe i we talk about it later in the episode actually there was a very special back-to-back -back set that happened in place of seven lions set so stay tuned for that we're going to talk about it in a little bit some lineups were released so Bass Nectar's Deja Voom Festival released their lineup. If you guys are into Bass Nectar, I know that's a very loyal fandom right there. Um, and then Decadence Arizona released their New Year's Eve lineup. It's really fucking stacked. It's like ridiculous. It was what? Fisher, Skrillex, Millennium. Who else was on that lineup? Diplo, Dylan Francis. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, so I mean like really stack right there. I know a lot of people are excited about that. I'm um, not doing any New Year's Eve festivals. I'm just putting that out there. Um, I have a good friend's wedding like right around there and it's Brian, my boyfriend's birthday right around there too. So New Year's Eve festivals are not happening for me, but that's really exciting for any of you guys who want to go to that. Lastly, just today it was announced that Okeechobee Music and Arts Festival is coming back, which is really exciting. Um, I'm not super familiar with the festival, but I remember one, watching one YouTuber's vlog about it. I'm forgetting her name right now. Sorry, I'm the worst. But she just talked about like how it was like, her absolute favorite festival because of the vibes and it's a camping festival. And Pasquale Rotella, who owns Insomniac, um, Insomniac is actually going to be producing the festival or they're the event company throwing it, which is really cool. It's happening in Sunshine Grove, Florida, March 5th to the 8th. I believe tickets are like pre-sale tickets are already going on sale on like the end of the week or next week so look into that uh, it sounds incredible his announcement was on instagram if you guys want to go check it out um but that's coming back and i know a lot of people are excited about it so definitely check out okitobi's um announcement so that is all the edm news i have for you guys today i know it's a little bit of a longer intro um but last week i didn't have too much to update you guys on so now we're all caught up so let's get into today's episode. Um, oh, and really quickly, before I forget, if you guys don't already know, you guys can always send in um, any topics you want me to talk about, people you want me to have on the podcast, episode suggestions, feedback, whatever it is, you can email me, raveculturecast at gmail.com, raveculturecast at gmail.com. Again, feel free to reach out there. You can also DM me at raveculturecast. Um, I usually reserve the official like Instagram account for anything related to the podcast. You guys can always reach out to me on my um, personal account at Emma Capotis if you want to as well. But okay, with all that being said, let's get into this episode. Today we have on the festival finesse. His name is Brian, but that is basically like his YouTube name. That's what he goes by, the festival finesse. You guys can most likely find him roaming around a music festival hanging out in the mosh pit front and center. He wears these bright tie-dye shirts with his logo on them. He is a Jersey native, uh, which is awesome. So that's been really cool. We both have like live near each other, which is really cool. We um, hung out at Ever After Festival. So he's in some of my vlogs if you guys wanna go check him out. And yeah, and he's a content creator. He's got some really awesome vlogs and music festival tips. That's his whole thing. He's really just trying to show people how they can finesse music festivals and um yeah and again he's very into bass music dubstep rhythm that's like his specialty he loves that heavier shit he's just starting to book some gigs and perform which is really cool it's been interesting to see his growth because i've only known him within this past year it hasn't been too long um his growth has been crazy you guys are gonna see once i start talking to him He's so animated, he's got such a great personality, and I think people can just really relate to him, and there's something about him. He's building this very loyal, I think, like community and, and fan base, I almost wanna say, around him. Um, so that's been incredible, just to watch his growth and how he's developed this like personal branding. He has merchandise, like it's really crazy. So I think you guys will like his story a lot. Um, and again, it's a completely different perspective from mine as far as musical interests. Uh, we debate mosh pits today. I had to have this conversation with him. He knows I already did a, a video on my YouTube channel 
how I feel about mosh pits. Um, but he's like the king of mosh pits and so he's in them all the time. So we debate a little bit about this trend that's all of a sudden happening in bass music. So expect that to happen. And I think that's like my main intro. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It's such a good interview. Um, so let's welcome to the podcast, the Festival Finesser. One thing I did want to mention really quickly before we get into the phone call here. If you guys hear any like abrupt starting and stopping of conversations or if we like randomly change the topic and you're like, what the fuck? Why didn't they finish that thought? Brian was actually like working at the same time as this phone call, which just shows his hustle right there. The man like multitasks so well and seriously like in any of his free time, which he doesn't have that much. So I'm glad that he was able to do this call, um, but he was working during this. So we got interrupted a few times. So we might sort of like lose track of what we were talking about and then start a new conversation. So just be forewarned that there might be like three or four parts in which we like totally changed the topic because we forgot where we were. So anyway, just gonna say that at the top of the episode because there might be th some things that might be a little confusing, but for the most part, it's all good. Uh, and yeah, and let's just get right into the episode. Hello. Hi, Emma. Hi, how you doing? Good. To get started here, um, I gave a quick intro on you, but for people who aren't familiar with you, do you mind just telling us like where you're from, what you do, how old you are, and any other like background info about your story? Sure. So my name is Brian. I am just turned 24 at the beginning of July. Well, I guess not just turned 24, but I'm still saying <laughs> that I'm 20, 23. But yeah. <laughs> at 24, I've lived in New Jersey all of that time and like North Jersey, like 25, 30 minutes from the city. And um, I've been into the EDM scene. I always forget the year, but it was whatever. whenever I turned 18, whenever I was old enough to go to festivals, <laughs> I went to EDC New York, whatever, whatever year it was, whatever year, whatever year I was at 2018. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much just fell in love with the whole culture. And I was kind of in love with the music already. Like I was mm -hmm. more, more interested in the music and the culture made me fall in love with the music. Right, so right. the whole experience. So, and then going to like all those festivals, I had a, I had a festival squad. And uh, mm -hmm. as, I got, as I got older, the squad got smaller and I started doing more things alone. And mm -hmm. I, you know, my friends would be like, oh, how was the festival you went to? And I'd be like, oh, it was good. But like, obviously that's an understatement. So right. I started filming my experiences to really just to kind of show my friends to be like, yeah, this is what I did. And then right. also for myself, for memories, just to have them permanently documented on the internet forever. Yeah, that's such a good way of putting it too. I always forget that. It is a good way to people who aren't involved at all in the community, like what you actually are doing. I always that, say, yeah. <laughs> I always say like, like I, I'm creating experiences for people that are there and memories of people that aren't. So it's like, if right. you couldn't come, if you couldn't come, you can watch my vlog to see yeah. what it was like. And if you were there, you could use it as a memory to look back on. You, you could literally possibly see yourself. Yeah, So exactly. it's, And I feel like a lot of people will go like type in like for looking for after movies to see mm -hmm. if they see themselves and my whole you know my whole my whole all of my content when i'm at festivals it's probably if you're near me you're probably in the video you know by chance so right right, right. it's a good way too i was um talking to cotton candy last week it's also for people who are interested in attending the best the festivals that you're attending they can get an idea of what it's like too i was actually interested to see i'm not really much of a podcast person but yeah. um i saw that one and i was just very interested to like hear oh, her yeah. because she was like one of the first people that I like, you know, ever knew on YouTube, like and doing EDM mm -hmm. content. So she, to me, she's kind of like the OG of everybody. So yeah. I was very, I was very um, interested to see what she had to say and kind of get like a, a feel for her personality, like you know, not right. you know, like like off the record kind of, like you're not yeah, on yeah. camera and just like so that was really cool. And like I, I know she just kind of like went through a whole like she's like not going to festivals I've and stuff changed. and like quit quit her job and stuff because she said she was going easy. So I was like looking forward to that. But I don't know if that's going down anymore. Oh but yeah. That was that was. On her, that was on her agenda so i was looking forward to doing something with you her mm -hmm. whoever else whoever whatever other content creators are going to be there because there's like new york city is like a hub there's going to be a bunch of people low key yep. out, the, out, out here that we probably don't even know since that came out she's already announced like four festivals that she's going to she actually is going to be coming to are you going to imagine so i don't i actually <laughs> i saw that you were going to imagine i saw that aid was going to imagine and i was like bro like i hit them up and just um you know trying to get a media pass whatever just you know giving them the pitch and they were down but i didn't realize that it was the week before lost lands so yeah. that's going to be tough to swing because lost lands is a, is a trip that i drive to or yeah. drive for because it's campy and everything so i need like a travel day before a travel day after I'm doing early mm -hmm. arrival, so it's uh, it's like a five day trip. No, so that's that, and that's like the big one for you, I feel. Like. It, literally, yeah. <laughs> that's like that that dude. It's gonna, Los Angeles is gonna be crazy. Just the amount of people that are asking that, am I going? 
I'm not, I, yeah. I, I want to I wanna meet you. And I'm just like, bro, meet up, meet up, meet up, meet up. So like the meetup yep, is going to yep. be huge. I don't even know what, what is going to be in store for Lost Sons, but I'm going to make it bigger, bigger than last year and bigger than anything I've done. That's so great. yeah, well, one thing at a time, I was going to ask you, I'll skip right to it, but you've had a huge, well, for anyone who doesn't know, we already covered it, but he's a YouTuber, you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't. Yeah, on I mean, YouTube under the festival. I like. Master. I just kind of. I briefly <laughs> threw it in there. Yeah, I briefly no, no, threw no. it in there. It's all good. Yeah, um, so I am a content creator and I am a festival blogger and enthusiast and do like mm -hmm. tips and tricks and more kind of like how to like, you know, how to finesse the festival, how to have the best experience yeah. possible. And uh, yeah, not so not really so much music based, actually. You know, it is. Right. But um, I don't talk about music as much. I talk about the experience and, you know, kind of more review, review of the festival and, you know, how, how my experience was. And you're deeply ingrained in the music, too. I mean, I know I know you've been uploading a lot of sets lately. So can you talk a little bit? about the type of music you're into of course well anybody that has been following <laughs> the channel anybody that knows me knows that i am a just diehard dubstep fan Any, anything aggressive anything with a lot of energy that's where i'm gonna be at but i do have like uh like a like a dancey side and i can shuffle and i can you know bounce around so I do, I do have like flows, I guess, but I'm yep. definitely, I'm definitely where, where the energy's at. And like, I don't really like for like, you know, it was, it was big dub was weird for me because like, it wasn't a festival where I was really there for the music, but that's like kind of the beauty of it is it's not a, some, it's not a festival you go to solely for the music. You go for the experience and the vibe. And that was one of the most, the one of the most unique mm -hmm. festivals that I went to. And it was nice to just go and, you know, enjoy the music. Cause it was like, it had its dubstep root, but it was definitely right. more experimental and more chilled back than I was used to. But <laughs> I, br I brought my chair and I was just hanging out at main stage in a chair mm -hmm. and just literally just hanging out Enjoying and it. so i definitely just to like back to the question i definitely am a dubstep rhythm person and i am like always in or around the mosh pit where, wherever the most energy <laughs> is in the crowd if it's not if it's not a mosh pit it's where there's the most energy in the crowd where there's the most movement and That's i'm not one to, I'm, I'm not one to be in the back of the crowd and um, watch out. from a watch from afar watch from the balcony no i am like up front as close to the rallies like you get pretty <laughs> much dead center and um that's always kind of been my spot but like uh, like kind of like you know coming from a, a video per, like an aspect like i was always like oh, the right. best place to be is in the middle so i'm just always gonna find my way to the middle and the best it's always easy to navigate I, like and people are oh, there's no room it's always so cramped but like if you're in a mosh pit <laughs> If you're in or around a mosh pit, there is a giant circle of space. You right, know, right, as right. long as long as there is not a, a drop. So that's kind of how I got it. You know, that's like yeah. that's like you know my anyone that's like my home base. You know, if you if you don't know where to find so me, people just look can for the find mosh you. Pit. Yeah, exactly. It's, or it's, it's, your it's shirt. become it's become <laughs> it's, shirt. it's become well that too. The shirts literally are a. <laughs> or like I, I made them with the idea to be to find to find me mm -hmm. you know if you so it's like if you're, you know if you seen a kid with a tie-dye shirt you're i mean, I mean been to help at a festival but like yep. you know if you if you know what to look for you know, the tie-dyes are very unique some of them so yep. they're you know if i have a bright pink tie-dye with pink and white you know i might i'm tall you know look you know you seen a kid with the <laughs> pink pink tie-dye with the mosh pit like you'll see yeah, it yeah <laughs> well we already so let's just jump right into it because i actually wanted to cover this topic and we didn't get to talk about this at all in the first take but um i i want to chat with you more about youtube too, but let's can we talk about mosh pits we have to yeah. talk about this I know so you made a video about that yeah so i have a video on my channel just talking about it in general more of like a controversial topic i feel like my opinion of it has changed a little bit because i'm more of like a if it's happy then do what makes you happy i don't give a fuck yeah. like if yeah. it's not for me i'm gonna avoid it but i would never right. be like i don't think it has a place i think that it's just evolving but i'm sort of curious what your take is on it and why do you think all of a sudden it's so popular because in my opinion this is a newer thing there weren't really many mosh pits at festivals like a couple years ago that i remember <laughs> i would i would this i would say the reason for that is because the like dubstep has kind of taken over and become very mainstream in the last two years i would say two yeah. or three years so it has kind of you know moshing is kind of a part of just you know any kind of heavy aggressive music it's just kind yep. of there's it's the only kind of thing you can do um because you can't really happily dance to it that's yeah. like <laughs> moshing, moshing is the happy form of you know dubstep dancing. dancing yeah so that's why i would say and I, I would agree you know it's definitely there's definitely moshing has definitely become more of a prevalent thing when it comes to festivals but it's also because so is dubstep right, right, right for sure and you've also had really good experiences i know you documented the one about the kid who like lost his glasses can you talk yeah, about yeah. that experience so that's actually that's funny because i made a video about how to not lose your glasses in a mosh pit because <laughs> i have been a victim to that many times and it's something that people don't really understand and you know people lose many things in mosh pits phones wallets keys mm -hmm. and uh you know i always try to you know it's it really it really sucks because in the beginning of the like my YouTubing, I made a, one of my first videos I made was a mosh pit etiquette video. And um, it was me and Bree, the mosh queen, talking about, 
you know, how, what to do in a mosh pit, what not to do in a mosh pit. And I literally, after we sat down and recorded the video, I made like a mosh pit montage of just like crazy mosh pit footage. <laughs> and it was like one of my most like legit videos. And I spent hours looking through all of my footage, all of, like looking for examples of a good mosh, good moshing, bad moshing. Mm -hmm. And I am not exaggerating. I watched every single clip that I had to look for the examples that I talked about because I know I had seen them. That's so and, awesome, um, yeah. So, unfortunately, that video got corrupted on a hard drive. Like, right as I was so close no. to like, right as I was putting the finishing touches on. And it was such a, it was such, like, a well, you know, developed video and, like, a cohesive video, I should say. Right. That I was like, I can't recreate that at this point in time. I have too many things on my plate. And, like, I just, it, like, it's like an OCD thing. Like, I just, I could not yep, recreate yep. what I what I made, my original thing. And it's just, like, I know it's there on my hard drive. So, I, I eventually want to pay to get it um, recovered and, okay. you know, put that, give that video to to the public which is why i haven't made a video like that yet because it's well overdue on the channel and i feel like it needs sure. to and it's you know if i don't get it back because it is recovery i found out is a very expensive thing and i unfortunately uh, have had to deal with you know multiple the recovered or lost i mean damaged or corrupted or whatever hard drives that stopped working so bad luck brian is a real thing if your name, is, if your name yep. is Brian. This is the thing you so, Okay. But is the mosh pit the etiquette one? Is that up or that was the whole it's, video? No, that, that, was, okay. that was the whole video. Yeah, so I, I, I had my points and I, mm -hmm. I, I want to do a video like that again with Bree because she definitely That'd has, awesome. you know, it's, it's it's nice to have a female perspective too, you sure, know? Sure. People would not even think, you know, like, you know, a girl's perspective in a mosh pit, but there are, it's, Bree's a prime example that girls are in mosh pits and yep. you, know, you kind of have, you kind of have to look out for them a little extra and, but also know yep. that they're there for the same reason to like bounce around and, you know, so it, fun, it really, yeah. it really comes down to, it's a form of like, you know, it is a form of dancing, it's a form of expression. No one's there to mm -hmm. hurt each other. It's not a battle of toughness. These are all the points that I'm just kind of off from the video that I could recall, like the main yep. points. And, you know, Those we're not there to hurt, we're, we're not there to hurt each other. Talk about like bad moshing. It's like pushing people from behind, uh, you know, if yeah. you're not in the, if you're not in the pit, don't don't interact with the pit do not right, just right. stand from the outside and well at people from the back you know do not and then people do like the whole like football like raging bull thing and they go side yeah. by side and pound i hate so well, people who ruin it for everyone right like of course with every scenario there's going to be the people who are either, like why... fucked up or whatever ruining it for the rest of everybody and that's why <laughs> i wanted to make the video to say this is what's mm -hmm. good moshing this is what's bad moshing and this, and this yeah. is why this is what i don't like you know so and i feel like hoping for me I mean, coming for me after all, like the Avon Gardner stuff and just the kind of reputation yeah. I have with like the moshing and being in mosh pits, I would hope people like <clears throat> take my opinion and just kind of like, I think about it at least. I'm not saying, you know, what I'm saying is right or wrong, but yep. at least, you know, I've been around it to have to have a reason as to why I think that. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that either way. Whenever you do it, I think that'll be huge for you. That's a yeah, really, really good thing to cover. I mean, definitely needed and definitely yes. requested. And it's just one of those, it's one of those projects that, is going to take and it's again it's unfortunate because i had so much footage and content that i don't have access to you know a, a, mm -hmm. ever, ever after 2018 high caliber 2018 a bunch of like end of the summer like tw a bunch of 2018 content that i just don't have access to because it's corrupted on a hard right. drive and I, I forget about that sometimes because i have made so much more content since then which is why i haven't replaced the hard mm -hmm. drives because i just have like kind of bounced back so hard it's like do i really want to spend like close to a thousand dollars to get a, a fraction of my work back yeah right, right. you know it's, it's really that one video that i really care about and then i at that point it's like i should just make a better one a new one i just have to kind of find yeah, the the, the, oh. the downtime because it's just with festival season mm -hmm. i don't it's, fe it's festival content everyone wants to see the vlogs and the reviews and the set times and the conflicts and like the meetup stuff so i've been well, something so like, like that doesn't have a timeline either which is good like you can put exactly, that out at exactly, any time. yeah so i would want to do that like in in quote unquote the off season when i'm a little when i have a little more free time a little more for creative sure. creative time and i'm not you know so um, you know kind of struggling for content you know and i'm like right. yeah, I, haven't put, I haven't put out a video and two or three weeks if yep. that happens it's being plot on something you know i'm never i'm never just not working i'm always doing something yeah um, no, i was gonna say you've been so fucking busy i wanted to quickly touch on i know uh, we don't have to get into all of them but you've done we did ever after together i saw you there i know you did electric yeah. forest and then you just had moonrise too how was moon that's one i haven't done yet moonrise is moonrise this year is the best one i've ever been to and i've heard many many other people say it's probably the best oh, one they've been to as well yeah. um and I, I think the reasons for that i won the weather moonrise always that's is good. cursed with, with, with rain so right. it's either postponed or delayed or canceled or whatever. Or even if it does go down, it's all muddy and, you know, mm -hmm. set times are all messed up and stuff. So it's just kind of chaotic. Very organized this year. You know, fluent lines. I didn't wait for anything, really. Um, I was good with, like, my wristband, will call, box office, all Everything was cool. I really yeah. had no com no complaints. No, like sound was good, the crowd was good. You know, c considering awesome. being a being a city fest, uh, no water issues. So you I know, know that good was an good, issue, yeah. good lineup, no travel issues. You know, no transportation issues. It was it was good all around, honestly. Did you have any favorite sets? 
or anybody that stood out that surprised you? So what's the one that stood out that's what that surprised me was like the pop up set. So Seven Lions was scheduled to play an hour set and couldn't make it for I guess oh, travel fuck, reasons. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. So it was. I was, I was literally, it was, I forget who said I was seeing, but I was, it was the second, it was the second day and I was like in the media section and I saw Wooly and Wooly oh, posted, okay. he posted one of my vlogs. Like I didn't send it to him. He just, I found it and posted it on, on his Twitter and like shouted oh, it out. Awesome. Like, so we had been chatting, like getting the content back and forth. So I saw him the first day and I was like, yo, do you recognize me at all? He was like, yeah, the festival finesse. You're like, oh, they're all weird. Like it's cool. It's cool to recognize, you know, like it's that he actually. Spreading. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was leaving the, like the media section on the second day, I, he, I saw him and I was like, you know, give him a dad, like what's good. And he was like, you heard, but um, seven lions couldn't make it. I'm going back to back with Mastodon and Calcium over at the, oh, you know, wow. at, at the, uh, at whatever, I forget what stage it was, but. Ended up being this massive back to back. So it was Mastodon, Wooly, Calcium, Heckler, Brondo, uh, Vampo was up there, I think. Maybe Whipped That's Cream, so I heard, cool. was up there. So it was just like this massive pop up back to back. And like, uh, just, I was there for a little bit That's because special. I was, that, exactly. I always, I was like, I'm not going to miss that set. I didn't stay right. for the whole set because 12th was also playing. So I'm not going to miss 12th okay. Planet. But um, I definitely got the, the content that I wanted. And I know with those kind of back to backs, when it's that many people, it's really just like a crowd pleaser and like you obviously there's not six people up there playing music it's like it's mm -hmm. one person playing music and five people dancing you know just be, kind of being hyped so but cool. um it was definitely a creative like unique set um with all the people that were out there definitely on the heavier side but um right, all the re right. all the all the recaps that i uploaded are pretty much the ones that stick out to me so i just cool. uploaded a, a mastodon or marada i think is how you say his new name so you just one changed of, it right his yeah, new logo yeah. and everything yeah so that he, they played no games like it was on like, his his visuals are all branded and everything so he's up cool. to up to pace with that and one of my other friends on youtube naughty stuff i saw made a video i think explaining i didn't actually watch the whole thing but just based on the title and the thumbnail mm -hmm. There is another like hardcore metal band that goes by Mastodon, Mastodon. like you know, it's, it's spelled it. differently. And I, w I would imagine there was some, you know, cease and desist, some like you know, lawyer technical huh. things that Legal. went down, and that's why I had to change his name. Got but, it. Um, All right, I'm gonna played, have to check out that video. Yeah, and so I, that's I want to watch the video too as to why it happened. And you know, the problem is the name is not the easiest name to pronounce. Right. It's conf you know everyone's gonna go continue to call him Mastodon because that was a cool name. It stuck with him. Everyone that's sure. what he came up as. That's what everybody knows him as. So I don't really think people are gonna say Murata. Uh -huh. And or, like I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone's gonna like people are gonna, gonna correct you. People are gonna correct you like sarcastically when you when mm -hmm. you say it. everyone's gonna know what you're talking about and not even really care because we understand. You know, it's just, uh, right. Yeah, it is what it is. That happened to um, what's his name? So it was Dash Berlin, and then they had the issue where they like separated like the everybody knows the front man like i would know what he looks like and there were actually two of them behind the scenes and he lost the name for a while so he was on lineups as jeffrey satorius like nobody wow. fucking know jeffrey satorius wow. like i know who it was because i like trance music but he actually just won the, the lawsuit and he gets to perform as dash berlin but i was like what is this guy gonna do he has to fucking no one is gonna like, know that yeah, yeah. It kind of sucks when they do that, but okay. So we'll have to check that out. I know you also you have a sudden death set up here, so everyone yeah, check that out was all that the was, new sets. Oh up. my god, that's like good. That was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he's fucking crazy. I thought my first time seeing him was at Ever After, and I really liked his set. He's definitely unique, and with the thing with him is like he has so much like void content, like his alias, his secondary project. Mm -hmm. So every time you see sudden death, you get so much unreleased music that and it's, it's all his. So it's like, that's why sudden death, that's a very unique 90% original music. Right, right, right. So I have a question. I'm just totally curious now I'm thinking about it. So when you're at, all of these sets and all of these festivals recording like are you hyper focused all the time on like getting certain shots or do you just like let your gopro run and just catch everything you can so i'm pretty i, I do like kind of plan certain shots like the gopro has different settings um uh, like you know as far as like how wide the camera can be so if like some of the, some of the shots where where like you know I'm really up close with like you know with the mm -hmm. DJ I have the selfie stick as high as it can go as close as I can get with the with the closest um you know angle, like with the closest you know lens I do try to get certain shots like I want to make sure I really get a really steady shot of the DJ on this one and then I yep. want to make sure I get a really good crowd shot and a really good rail shot but I also don't let you know certain things you can't predict you know you don't know like yeah. I, I'll know certain certain songs are going to be hype. Obviously, if you see like a mosh pit forming or a wall of death forming, oh, something's going to happen. If the you DJ is <laughs> if the DJ is telling you to do something, you should probably record it because it's going to be epic. If we saying everybody sit down, everybody 
jump to the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? When he does those, everybody clap or whatever. So I do, and I do a lot of like filming, filming myself, you know, that for some reason mm -hmm. I find that makes really good content, you know, filming myself bouncing around and being in the mosh pit, kind of like point yeah. of view, being at the front of the rail, because those, those perspectives are perspectives that not everybody gets to see. And those are right. perspectives that, that I wanted to see. And those are perspectives that are, are reasons why I started doing the channel with the hopes that I'd be back there. And here I am being yeah. behind the rail in the photo pit, you know, split down the rail for that lost lands. Like what? Like, and that was, I was like, I'm going to kind of, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't leave that place, bro. During lost lands, I was chilling in media section the whole time because one, it was right, overcrowded, right. but not overcrowded, but it was huge. Bro. It was packed. I would just hang out in the media section and just see all my homies that I knew on the rail and just, you know, there was water back there. That, you know, I was chilling content. I, it was amazing. I think there's just something to say too about we're all fans of the music first. So it's also like just to see us enjoying what we're doing and like relating to everybody else versus like just being a professional Hold on, photographer. Hold on. Yeah, the balance the balance is crazy. Like we could talk about that for a second. People yeah, don't go ahead. people don't people don't know this and it's one of you know, not really a secret. But yeah. you know, pe people probably wonder how, how I can go to a festival on Sunday and have an, a vlog uploaded by Monday yep. and <laughs> have a job and have a social life. And the, 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 the secret to the, to, the, to the magic is I can you know, upload content at work and edit content mm -hmm. at work because, like I said, I can get all my work done at the beginning of the day. And right. then I have if I, I work a lot of double shifts. So I, my, my day is 15 hours. So right. I, a, lot, a lot of that time was spent without having Wi-Fi. So mm -hmm. rather, rather than, and this is like before, this is like not recently, this is kind of how it evolved. Uh, sure. Rather rather than, you know, just being bored and like just, you know, sitting there with you know, twiddling my thumbs, I'll bring my computer and like edit and, you know, do Photoshop stuff and just mm -hmm. make content and just come up with ideas and like just kill kill time, honestly, at first. Because that was like my hobby was video editing. And then that's what the, right. that, like that whole, like the channel kind of filled that time. And it was just for, for fun. And like I was designing the logo and like doing the channel layout. And, like I had done YouTube before. So I knew what I was doing. I knew how to make it look legit and like the thumbnails and like, so it was really kind of like I was plotting and just moving, like, you know, just making this all like on the low, still mm -hmm. doing it, but not telling anybody. And then when it finally started picking up that like it was getting views and then I had subscribers, that's when right. my, my, my friends started like jumping on the bandwagon. And like, it wasn't until like Lost Lands last year where mm -hmm. people where people were like okay brian like you what the fuck like what did like what, what did you what did you what did you do like what is good like you, like i literally felt famous right before right. before I, before i even got to lost lands in the parking lot of walmart multiple people had approached me like yo you're the guy from youtube and i was like holy fuck yeah i am the guy from youtube but like shit like <laughs> what, what's up like and i didn't know what to do like it was weird and like it's i was kind of, of fucking hard I, was, work. I was kind of wondering like you know is it is it gonna be like that like people are gonna recognize me or are they gonna just mm -hmm. kind of be like whispering like oh, i not the guy like but no, everybody it was just like mad cool and like people had been like people from other you know people that i saw ever after in mm -hmm. 2017 my first year i saw at walmart and i recognized me you know like yo you remember me from Walt from that's my hotel so in, in canada and i was like dude what like is that's why i knew it was going to be like just a crazy weekend and it was like the amount of like just with the media's path just seeing like, all my friends seeing me like just running through the middle like they're mm -hmm. like yo honestly like I, I i just love seeing you just like i could just tell you're so happy and i was like dude i am like look at me dude yeah. i'm just i'm still in like <laughs> backstage at Lost Lands and like I just started doing it. it's so crazy well there's like I feel like there's two sides of it there's one part where it's like you're alone for a lot of it you're editing you're grinding behind the scenes you're working multiple jobs editing doing everything on your own and then there's the second half where like you're meeting people in person you're actually filming you're traveling to festivals and it's just such like a weird dichotomy there like I don't know sometimes I feel like I haven't been to a festival since ever after so for Electric Zoo I, I talk to people online all the time and I'm like okay it's so weird so much of this alone and then when you meet people in person you're just so used to being behind a camera <laughs> like yeah editing yeah, I mean, it like I, <laughs> I try the one thing that I try to do is I try to like leave the festival finesse behind like right. you know when I when I when I, we do the meetups and stuff and like you probably saw like I'm Brian I'm not the festival yep, finesse yep. I'll tell you my first name I'll kick it with you I, I, I kind of I kind of have a different personality on the camera mm -hmm. like there's a little bit of like, of like an act because like I talk fast I stutter so like I'll I'll be talking and I'll be like fuck I fucked up and then I'll I'll, I'll come back like you know <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, and I'll come back like I like, from where I messed up because I know I'm gonna be editing it so I know that I can fix it in editing and, like sure. so I've mm -hmm. kind of found my own rhythm to production and recording and like it is sometimes an act because like I get frustrated and like I have to you know I have to pretend like I'm not mad and you know mm -hmm. I, I vividly remember this I'm telling the story because I vividly remember one time I was doing the vlog and I was like you know when I do like the intros I'm trying to come with energy 
energy you have to keep the new people like entertained and like you know yeah. not just some boring person on the screen i try to come with some mm -hmm. energy and keep Animated. you watching keep you on your toes keep it fresh yeah so um and like it is sometimes i do embarrass myself a little bit like you know if people are laughing <laughs> that's also good so i don't really care i've been yep. making a fool of myself on the internet since i was like 13. that's it's how it just... all started kind of yeah well i was gonna ask you did the because i feel like you've definitely built like a very loyal community and fan you also have like a more specific audience too because of like the genres that you're targeting but yeah. did the festival finesse name come first as a nickname already or did that come from your youtube channel so the fest the festival finesse definitely came from the channel that was it was kind of like and it was again all, all a plot all a scheme yeah i actually wrote a script like I, like i said i'm a film major i did like a senior project wrote, wrote like a like made like a mini like a like a short film sure. and, the, and in the script um one of the characters didn't have an actual name but his name was young finesse god that was his like the character's name and he was like the, like, the awesome. sly guy the sly guy you know he was always he was like a good kid but he was always trying to like always kind of like trying to bend the rules and get around certain things and like that's mm -hmm. kind of like how I am with certain things like I'm not like I'm, I'm one to like kind of go against the grain and like yeah I'll bend a couple rules or break a couple rules as long as no one's getting hurt like li little things are in there things to do to make my life better you know mm -hmm. and like sometimes like you have to finesse the festival sometimes you gotta do certain things certain other people wouldn't necessarily approve of but you know it's it's, enhance it's, the experience. it's, 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 do, it's do or die it's like if you right. want to wait, you want to wait on a three-hour line if you want if you want to slide with everybody else you know sure sure yeah little yeah. things you got those tips exactly well it's also like more of a veteran you've done a bunch of festivals now at this point and like sometimes it, you got to you forget like there are people who are literally watching your videos who have not even attended a festival like they're looking at you to figure out like what the fuck they're gonna do yeah. when yeah. they go to their first festival so it's like it's definitely providing helpful tips to people who are beginners in the scene for sure i try to make more i try to I, with the with the vlogs i try to make every video have a purpose so like mm -hmm. if i'm recording something it's because i'm either showing you how long it took to get somewhere or i'm showing you how i how i prepared or, or what's happening you know I, I just like to kind of be very kind of like keep track of time and uh if, if you follow the vlog chronologically you could actually like you could like assess like all right it took him 20 minutes to park and then walk to the venue and it took him half an hour right. to get inside and you could actually calculate all that stuff if you if you were that if you're that like interested to see how long the wait times are and like uh you know how long security That's was crazy. and how long it how long it took to like the water line and like how long i was at a particular set for so really wanted to like digest it and like, really break it down you could see how long it took us to get home and you know and then sometimes you could be like damn there's like a four hour gap there brown what were you doing without filming like and it's it kind of raises the question like you know it's, right. so try not to like let the festival finesse or take over brian and like mm -hmm. you know wor work more than i'm enjoying myself at the festival right. but um brie was one to tell me like you know i really don't see you do i really don't see you doing it as work because she was like i've never met anybody who like wants to like after a festival wants to like like work and like edit and like that's exactly. what I, I, so I love to do is like after the festival i love to like start watching and editing because because I know I can get a jump start on uploading the content. And I've done that right. last year, last year, Izu, I just was like, it ended, I got home and it was like, you know, because we live so close, we got home kind of early. And I was <laughs> like, well, what am I going to do? It's only midnight. And I'm, you right. know, I wasn't, go I wasn't going on the second day. I was going on the third day. So I stayed up through the night editing and exporting by the time, by the time you were going to day two, day one was uploaded. So that's crazy. That's a that was, work ethic right there. <laughs> and and that video got like ten thousand views. And that video was like the that was the test for me. I was like, let's see if this turnaround time actually works. Cause I always said it's sure. like if you get the video done within like forty eight hours of the event, you're you automatically increase your views because it's right. still still hot and it's a it's a the hot topic. People wanna like I said, people wanna see if they were in the after movie or whatever. They wanna see if an after movie was made. Well actually I wanted to ask you another question because you sort of branded yourself entirely here and then you also have for people who aren't have merch and you do different t shirts and you've got different styles coming out. I love the marble print, you've got like tie dye prints. Like when did you get the idea to do the merch? And is that like all you just like designing that? whenever you have free time so the merch was just kind of like de it's definitely bigger than i ever expected it to be and it yeah. was really just supposed to be like a homey thing and like when i first started the channel you know now it's like people are people recognize me people, people are very clear that they know who i am like they mm -hmm. they see me they watch me they're, they're looking for me at, at some point but there are other times like in the beginning people weren't sure if i was the person so i wanted to rep the logo as much as i could so at yeah. least you know maybe if you didn't recognize me recognize the logo vice versa so if you're the festival finesse or you see the shirt bro like yeah, yeah, yeah i am so i had the idea and people like started asking oh you should make shirts and it was just like a like a, right. like a i saw comments and i had an idea and like i knew people that were doing merch at the time There's like a like, need for it not even a need there is like a request I, I, <laughs> I, I i wasn't fearful like of of it flopping like i was like i'll, I'll sure. invest 
200 $300 into having my own t-shirts because that's really not a huge L. You know, I've, I've yeah. spent more money on certain things for so to, to invest in myself and something that I've always wanted, like a t-shirt company, a clothing line, whatever you want to call it. And so I just was like, I'm going to do something that's not, I'm not just going to put my logo on a t-shirt because that's, that's just basic and it doesn't really sell. I was like, I'm right. going to do tie-dye because tie-dye has colorful and it's the design and people, so people wear blank, people wear blank tie-dye shirts. So to put my logo on it, it just kind of, it gives a little more of like a selling aspect and it's just cool or it pops more. And like I said, I can sell it as an aspect of never get lost in the crowd. Always look for your homie with the FF shirt. Now it's become even something bigger and people see other FF shirts in the crowd and it's like, oh, you know, Brian? And it's either, yeah, that's my homie or yeah. no, but I watch the channel. Oh, what's good? Finesse gang. And now you've got a homie that you like something to connect with, Finesse an icebreaker. With, yeah. And, you know, that's I have so multiple funny. people that have been like, yo, someone came up to me because of your shirt or, you know, people, you know, the people will take pictures of sh with, with strangers. That's so awesome. Like my yeah. friends take pictures with strangers and send it to me when they're, at, when they're in different states. And I'm like, yo, yeah. that's so great. That's so crazy. When I was in Colorado, one of my friends in Colorado and doing the Denver show for Gonzo White Night, one of my friends sent me a picture of somebody wearing a finesse gang tee online. That's and I was like, crazy. what? <laughs> yeah, dude, I was like, what? So yeah. Nuts. And I it's do become a bigger thing. It's, for well, sure. actually, I, yeah, well, I do all, I do all the, to answer your question. I do all like the packaging and shipping and I made the logo myself and I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't do like I buy the shirts pre dyed. Right, right. So I don't do, I don't do anything. any of the dyeing. And um, I have a really good home. Well, not, now he's a really good homie who I, at first was kind of like a business partner, but now mm -hmm. I, you know, because I've been, because the shirts have been doing so well, um, we have been doing a lot more work together. He's on the same, on the same screens. We have like mini logos. So like for, for like, we're going to do like, um, kind of like a chest logo, like a pocket hoodie kind of okay, thing, cool. like a pocket tee. So we have or like, we have some of like the rhythm t-shirts are branded with the logo on the back, like a mini logo at the top of the tee. Mm -hmm. So we can do like, just to kind of have more, more variety. Yeah. But, um, but if people want to, yeah. like, for people who don't know, Brian keeps it real, brings boxes to festivals and will sell them <laughs> to you. So that's the best place to find it, right? Or to DM you on Instagram, right? D well, yeah. So I do all my shipping and packaging, like, and, like, literally like, in-house, like, in my in my home. So I yeah. put, I handwrite the, like, the, the labels and I put business <laughs> cards and I put a little gift in every in every bag. So they literally come from my house, you know, from my hands. I ch Again, I try to make that connection. For the first time, actually, at Moonrise, I did something a little different. I brought, oh, cool. I did it ever i did it ever after but not to this extent i, I brought like five t-shirts like folded up in my camelback and um i have a, i have a backpack similar to the lunchbox um okay. it's, yep. it's the it's the rave runner so it um you know has like the anti-theft pockets in the back and whatever so it has that that big pocket in the back so i just folded up five t-shirts brought them the all size large and sold them sold most of them at the meetup and then actually i sold all of them at the meetup the first day and the second day the meetup wasn't as big but i still sold them and then mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, I just sporadically, you know, do you happen to have merch? I actually do happen to have merch. Even though I said I wasn't going to, I do. That's so funny. And yeah. So and I, ended up, I ended up selling out both days and that was the best way to do it. So yeah. my idea, my idea for Lost Land, since you know, that's going to be a big one for me, for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, I want to do a merch meetup. So on, on the early arrival day, meet at a certain oh, okay. spot. And if anybody wants, because it's, like, it's kind of hard to do it when it's the festival and like, yeah. you can't, I don't know if I could bring 50 t-shirts. I did last right. year somehow. I brought in a bag of 25 t-shirts and a shop oh, right wow. bag <laughs> and no one questioned it. But when I went to the so, forest, yeah, I got them all taken away. Yeah, they don't want you to sell anything inside. So, huh. so a meetup um, before would be really cool. So yeah, I want to do a meetup before and you know come with twenty bucks. You can come to my campsite, or I'll just bring a box of shirts somewhere, post up, and mm -hmm. just set up shop. You know, and awesome. you can come do it. So it'll be, it'll be like a meetup. You know, come do the same thing. Come chill, hang right. out, take pictures. Not in the the madness of Lost Lands, but more in a relax. We can go kick out at campsite, like whatever. You know, I'm not I'm not really opposed. To just hanging out somewhere but yeah. uh i definitely want to do that because i know i know merch is a thing people want it people are going to be asking if i'm going to have it and mm -hmm. um some people can't get it shipped because they come they live in canada they live like overseas so that's their that's their opportunity to get it and i when i if i have it i want to provide it so okay well i was going to ask too so besides so you have is easier than and then lost lands are those like the two big ones you have right now Fest yeah because i know you're playing shows which i want to talk about you're yeah, starting we, can, to we can talk. We can talk about that. <laughs> we also forgot about Big Dub, which I went to in between Moonrise okay. and Forest. Okay. That one, it's in Pennsylvania. It's a smaller. Mm -hmm. It's a. It's a. It's definitely a smaller festival. And the only reason I know about it was because Brie went last year, and she was just mm -hmm. hyping it up. Od and like it was very. Um, it's a. It's a smaller scale festival. When you look. When you look at the lineup, you're not really sold. 
But right. if you want, if you watch my vlog, it would probably sell you a little bit more because it is literally a free for all. Once you get past the security, and, I, and, I, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying this because it's like it's like it's unorganized and chaotic. But yeah. once you get once you get past your initial car search, there is no security. There are no lines. There is no there is no gates to go to the festival. Everything is in the campgrounds. Oh, so wow, okay. it's it's not it's 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 maybe like three three to five thousand people. So it's not a festival where there's a million people around you all the time. Sure. It's a very small local DJs, people you probably know on stage but there's also big acts like hesh subtronics al ross bomber company Z and vampa they, so they had like you know an, ar an array of mm -hmm. different um lineups definitely more bassy experimental and um Pretty again cool. kind, kind of more like regional acts you know a lot, sure. a lot of east coast djs and not too many people not too many like you know major headlining acts but people that could totally headline their own you know but not right. people, not someone to headline like a major festival right right, right. okay is that the one where you were passed out in a chair? Yeah, that was that one. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say it looked like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, that yeah, that one that whole day was just <laughs> that whole that whole weekend, like I said, it was just there was a no blur. our friends slept in hammocks at main stage the entire night. Like That's they slept funny. over at main stage. No one there's no no bad there's no one cared. I'm not saying no one right. cared, but like no one's gonna kick you out. Like it's just like you it's do one you. of it's it's one of those like family events. So it's like everyone's looking out for each other, like, yeah, you do you. Mm -hmm. Everyone just kinda like handle your shit. And like, just stay safe. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, so can you talk a little bit about what you've been doing, like DJing wise, and some of the gigs that you've been booking? Because this is new for you. Yes, this is very new. So, um, a w in like less than a week, this coming Saturday, the twenty fourth, yeah, playing with my homies on Mood Dubs, opening up for OG Nixon and Crimer, which is a two massive names, honestly. So to be on the same lineup as them is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's being thrown by. Uh, and actually a company that came out of nowhere, like a, you know, a quote unquote production company. I guess that's what you would call them. But the people that are organizing the event are called Fuckhouse Productions. And they are a solely based dubstep branded event company. This was their first event. And they're actually also based out of New Jersey. But they're like, he's, he, kids are still in school. So okay. they're not really in the area like that. So they're just kind of home for the summer. This is their big show. And then um, they're going to try to do more things. I don't, I don't know actually what their plan is, to be honest. But definitely kind of risky, I would say, because mm -hmm. they booked two major, two huge acts and uh, the same weekend as Base Canyon. And and uh, they just didn't. I feel like the, pr the promo has not been um, as heavy. And like the they, they kind of have been like banking on me. Not banking on me, but I feel like they're like, oh, we'll use the, we'll use the festival finesse as promo Plug because it he, everywhere. he's he's <laughs> in with all those people. But you know, I I can only you know I don't have as much pull as they think. You know, I know my people, but like just because right, they right, know right. me, or just because I know them, doesn't mean they're gonna come in for the, for the set at doors. And I think we're, we're the first set of the night. But that's this upcoming Saturday, the twenty fourth in Brooklyn. If you guys are in the area, yes, we can post the flyer. Yeah, I'll share the flyer for sure. But you did you just play another show recently? You oh had yeah, the first I, one, I right? did. I did. I forgot <laughs> about those two entirely. Yeah. So I did two shows in Baltimore, definitely more small scale shows, which is why I didn't even, I didn't even really think about them. I, yeah. I kind of, you know, every, I, I'm seeking every opportunity, seizing every moment, sure. I guess you could say, but I know some, some opportunities are more like practice for me. And, uh, you know, I know I have the opportunity. I can, I can mess up. I can, you know, be a little like, not say I have stage fright, but like, you know, I guess being like timid on the mic, being a little mm -hmm. like uncomfortable speaking, which I, what you would think is like, you know, oh, you, you're always on camera. You should be uncomfortable and not, <laughs> not stage fright, but it's like weird. If it's a totally different pr thing. Though. Projected on a mic, you know, it's weird. Yeah. We've got to start somewhere too. Like, exactly. Everybody has so that's to why somewhere. I just jumped into it. I literally drove. We, we, it was, so the first one was for, it was in Baltimore. My, my homies um well not I, I, my, definitely my homies now mm -hmm. but my one friend in particular who i met at lost lands literally he added me on snapchat the weekend of lost lands for like the, you know a couple days before leaving i happened to meet him he was like oh, i said you on snap i recognized him i remembered him we saw it we, like he was just mad cool we kicked it and um i just saw him at a bunch of other events throughout the throughout like you know the season and mm -hmm. then um he told me he was like yo i'm throwing the, we're starting to throw shows you know in in, in maryland so that's where he's from and uh Okay. You know, I was I was also we me and Brie are also trying to do the same thing and kind of throw our own shows. We can talk about that too, but okay, um, cool. related with DJing, he was like, if you want to if you want to play, I you know I can probably get you a slot if you want to come through. And I was yeah, I'd love to. I'd be honored to come through to your first mm -hmm. show. And like so, I literally me and Brie didn't plan it the best because got there 15 minutes before I was supposed to play. 
So there oh was no, God. like, there was no, like, let's fill out the venue. Let's, let's say hi to everybody. It was just kind of like plug in and play. Funny. Oh and my God. Yeah. You live life on the edge. I'd be having anxiety. Yeah. I, mean, I, guess, I wasn't really <laughs> nervous because I knew what I was getting into. My music was yeah. ready. I knew what kind of, I knew what kind of like CDJs were going to be there. So what was weird was I had been practicing a lot of music for the, um, the OG Nixon show, the Kramer show. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is I have a lot of music in my library that's, you know, from OG Nixon, not from him, but like by him. And, okay. um, you know, I can't really play that for because it's yeah, his show. I, I can't take I can't steal his thunder. I made a little playlist, you know, a couple of days before I went to Baltimore with a bunch of OG Nixon songs, because when I realized how many songs that I had by him, it yeah. just opened up a, a whole new door of, you know, my playlist. So right, I right. made I, I made a new playlist for Baltimore. So I was kind of experimenting with it. And some of the experimenting didn't go as well as, as I planned. hoped. Just okay. yeah, because I wasn't I wasn't as like um I wasn't as like finished. I was sure, still sure. kind of like testing and practicing and like getting certain just kind of figuring it out. You know, I hadn't like the stuff I have for Brooklyn mm-hmm. is has been practiced, kind of rehearsed. Um, right. Not to say not to say it's a pre-recorded set. It's going to be live, but yeah. I know what I'm going to play, and I I'm, I'm like a. I don't produce at all. My like, quote unquote area of expertise. I don't even think that's the right like thing to use. But like or your style, that you're doing. my my style. Yeah, I'm a chop yeah. DJ. I'm a chop artist. So I I okay. like playing two songs at once, cutting back and forth between them because right. um any I just no disrespect to like any DJs or anything, but I feel like anybody mm-hmm. can just be up there and press a button. I let a song right, play right. out and start another one. Obviously, it takes a good DJ to read a crowd and like surprise the crowd and just keep it fresh and keep you like on your toes. But um, sure. I, and to know your audience too. Ex- exactly. You obviously know who's gonna kind of be there. Based on so, who's playing that like, night. Like, uh, and what, what kind of event you're at. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exciting. So, you kind of have an idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah. So, there's that show, the OG Nixon show. And then after that, we do that's the show that me and Brie are going to throw. So, Brie works at a bar and across the street, the bar is like, you know, like attached to a venue okay. um and the, the venue usually is like held for like like metal events and like just punk heavy metal whatever like just death metal music okay and um so the the place is used to mosh pit so hopefully like that's <laughs> that's kind of like what we're what we're like kind of it as. Yeah, yeah like it's gonna be aggressive and like people just like you know just moshing in circle pits but Perfect. we're trying to make it more of like we're definitely marketing the new jersey crowd because we're trying we know that there's a new jersey scene whether it's base head or not we know people we know mm-hmm. a lot of people travel to new york city for music right and we know we know a lot of people out here um you know us kind of included don't have a lot of friends in the community but like i said we're all going to new york city on the same nights and if i bet you if you put everybody in a line and ask where you're from you'd find at least four people that were from new jersey within 25 minutes of, sure. you know driving distance of you so we're trying to bring all those people together under the same roof in new jersey to be like look how many people are in are in this area that are close enough come hang mm-hmm. out and and enjoy dubstep you know so right, right, right. we're we're attacking that audience and we're also attacking like our friends and it's like it's right in the area we're 20 minutes from our not even 20 minutes like 15 minutes from mm-hmm. me and Bree's house so we're trying to like make it like a homie reunion and, like all our friends even if, even if you're not into dubstep come hang out because i promise you you will know somebody else here um right. just be, if you know me you'll know somebody we're else on here the same shows yeah, yeah yeah that's awesome and you've kind of got like a group too right well what are your um plans as well are you doing all three days or I haven't decided. I, I sold it. I sold enough tickets to get me and Bree enough to to go for all three days. Okay. So we uh, like it's just it's a matter of do we want to go all three days? Do we want right. to take off work all three days? You know, you got to worry yeah, about travel. It. So even though it's, you're not paying money, you still have to travel to get there and get home. Sure. And, just eating yeah. there probably yeah so friday for sure the one day you said friday for sure i'll definitely be going another day because i have access to it what sure. i'm what, what we're thinking about doing is like going friday with vip and then doing okay. like sunday ga because with, with, with like the points the pollen points and everything like yep. you, certain things are certain they're different values yep yep, yep. Uh, i haven't purchased anything yet and made anything like solid because i want to see it i you know i'm still, still selling tickets so you know i don't want to like buy a vip ticket and mm-hmm. then or like you know buy a three-day ticket and then be like oh i should have gotten the the vip in the sunday because i'm not going yeah. you know so I, I want to wait till I really know. Like, I want to see what I can get, and you know, you know, crunch some numbers, and maybe I can get two VIP and like one D, one GA or th- whatever. You know, yep. I just kind of got to do some, make some combos based That's, on the points. I made and, that mistake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I fucked yeah. it up. <laughs> so I want to see what I could actually buy because, like, I did the same thing. I, was like, I got enough points, people want to buy some, but then I was mm-hmm. like, oh, if I if I waited, I could have got this and got like the yeah. like the merch bundle too. But now I blew all my points on this. Would you want? Have you thought about doing any of the after parties or? have you done them in the past before because i've never done it after parties i'm always like completely what i do all three days usually so last year i will i will i will tell you an x-rated festival finesse story last year <laughs> I, I i really finessed izu and i just like jumped the fence 
and okay. went I went Saturday after Izu there was like a pop up. I don't know if it was a pop up, but it was like recently and like the same day of the Izu it was announced that um 12th Planet a Virtual Riot Infected Murda were going to be at Knitting Factory and Knitting Factory is like yeah. a super sm- super small venue and um you know it's it's like a, that's our spot honestly we've been, been, I've done a bunch of vlogs there I'm not like a local like not a local like a regular there, you know yeah, familiar yeah. face when I heard that I was like bro we have to go so we went and it was sold out and we snuck into a sold out show after sneaking into Izu so that that was my I'm not sure if that was an official after party because like I know all the after parties are at, like Shemansky and like you know all these probably like analog or something like that. That was what I did as far as after parties. And I'm not much of an after party person, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like like I said, I'd rather go home and edit if yeah. I can. If I you know it, it depends on the night and who I'm with. But like if it's just me and like me and Bree. I would mm-hmm. probably just go home and like start editing. But like, if we're yep. gonna be with like five people, we might like post game somewhere and just go to someone's house and chill. But like, again, sure. if you're gonna if you're gonna go to Ezo all three days and you're gonna be out partying oh, before, you know, exhausting. what I'm saying at four o'clock. Yeah. I, I, I'm <laughs> gonna be partying. I'm gonna. I just saw the artists that are gonna be playing the after party. Mm-hmm. Most most likely, it's like I'm gonna do the same thing tomorrow with different artists. So why am I gonna go and do the same thing at night? It's more fun at right. the festival during the day. I'm gonna pay more money again to, to party again. Like, nah, bro, I'm good. Like I just did this for twelve hours. Yeah, yeah. It's like so. if you're coming into town you don't live around here and you like exactly stuff to you, do you want, it's a good idea yeah but. <laughs> exactly that, that exactly that's why i went to the after party and, and ever after which was I mean, shivers of maps right. on that was like literally like historic that was insane but that to go down <laughs> a two-hour back-to-back with yeah, that crazy. was amazing so and again i went that was one of the only after parties i went to because it wasn't from the area festival ended early mm-hmm. and, and it was like you know i'm the one thing about the after party that's cool is like it's definitely more of like an intimate vibe and mm-hmm. like you're, you know you're in a more cl- closer space but you're also in a closer space like output where you can't move you know like right so garage is gonna be fucking packed yeah yeah oh my god it's yeah crazy <laughs> with the I have they have. oh it was so cool i just went for the chris uh chris lake fisher one which was like beyond sold out i think they oversold it but it, the visuals yeah. and like the actual yeah i heard the, the whole was space is crazy it's really really cool but we'll try and figure out something because we'll, we'll both be there on friday but we definitely have to plan something i'm sure i'm like my my schedule is weird because friday going with my best friend my little tag Tara, and then Saturday I'm going with Tara and Vicky, two of my best friends, and then Sunday we have like a group of all these random people, like our boyfriends. We have friends from the Baltimore area, so no it's like completely fucking crazy. But Friday and Saturday I'll just be running around, enjoying yeah, life. I'm so excited! <laughs> I cannot wait. I'm not sure as far as like squads what we're gonna be doing because Friday. Friday, I'm probably going to be squatting because everybody keeps asking me what day I'm going. And I'm like, oh, I'm definitely mm-hmm. going Friday. So everybody has bought Friday. So right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be... Usually when I go to a festival, I just drive. But yeah. like, I'm going to be going with so many people. I, I don't, Everybody comes with me. I drive five people, whatever. But I think we're going to be more than five people. And I doubt everybody's going to want to drive. So really, yeah. we're probably, probably going to either like uh, like split split some Ubers, like get two Ubers or something like that. Everybody splits yep. it. Because I'm probably going to be coming with like 10 people, like, like 10 like legit, like 10 like people that yeah. i know and they're just going to kind of be sticking with me because they're not really going for the music they're coming for the sure, just because sure. it's a close festival they don't really know who they're seeing but mm-hmm. this is like this is like their one time to like come to a festival with me because it's close yeah. and it's just it's, it's honestly like the most local festival around here mm-hmm. that kind that has like the most kind of like oh you'll have a good time regardless because it's just the amount of people is so overwhelming You're if you've never been it's like holy shit like this is crazy this is it's a new world oh i'm getting so pumped just talking about it i'm like dying for a festival right now <laughs> I'm, been, like, uh, I just, for one. I'm hyped for Ezu because like I don't know I'm sure you are too that's like our hometown fest like yep. the 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 like the recognition is going to be crazy because it's going to be all local it's going to be friends and just people that are also from the area and yeah. people that are even from outside the area yeah it's like, really I, you, crazy it's funny like festivals like Moonrise, Electric Zoo that are kind of you know Moonrise is kind of like I don't really consider that great of a festival I go because it's close mm-hmm. but um I'm only saying that because it's close because I've been there four years but you know I meet I meet people that travel. 10 hours you know i met a, i met a kid who was 15 in the via I got, he came to the meetup and he ended up like sticking around after because he was by himself and i was no like, you, by yourself? you by yourself bro and he was like yeah like you know he's like i'm i was like how and so he was hanging out with me and i was like I'm, how old are you bro oh. and he was like oh i'm 15 i was like what and he was like <laughs> i was like are you here by yourself and he was like no nah, my dad's chilling in vip and i was like yo and he was like yeah i'm from i'm from like minneapolis or whatever and i was like what well, you flew here he was like, yeah, and I was like, and your dad flew here too with you. Like that was, yo, know, that's that's so crazy. That's fucking yeah. crazy. Right? Me Shout as a parent. Kid, <laughs> I saw him. I saw him like after, and I just like shook his eyes hand. I was like, yo, you are you are awesome. Like, <laughs> like yeah, that's so cool. That's what I would do. I would just like hang out in the back because when I went, I was going to festivals 
but they were like alternative and whatever. But our one friend did that when we were in like ninth grade. So we had to be 14 or 15 and the mom just like hung out in the back. And I was so grateful that she did that because that was the first festival that I ever went to. And here I am uh, like 13 years later, <laughs> 14 years later. It's crazy when you get started early. But just to wrap it up here, I know you have a lot of things coming up. So there are plenty of opportunities for people to see you out and about or catch you at a festival. But just in general, like what are you most excited for right now? Are you like trying to focus on putting out a lot of content do you want to travel more to festivals or like what is the thing that like is driving you the most right now well it's funny that you ask what i'm most excited for because (laughs) what what i what i'm kind of most excited for at at the current moment not really not really like channel related but going back to the dj stuff i actually got booked to play high caliber festival which is oh no way yeah the battleship um, (laughs) like the battleship festival so yeah that's gonna be like my first festival set and um it's gonna be a silent disco so i'm I'm sure it's gonna be early i'm sure it's gonna be kind of dead but um like i said anytime on stage i'll take because it's just Mm -hmm. me me being on stage and then me also feeling feeling myself on stage that, yeah. that does not that does not hurt you know the, the, just getting the fact that i'm a dj out there and can play on cdjs and you know can get bookings and kind of bring a crowd mm-hmm. that's all people need to see to you know to, to at least think about booking me or you know right. again, when i say when i say book i'm not really getting paid i'm i'm, right, I'm right. not really gonna I'm not, if anybody if anybody wants to book if anybody listening wants to book me <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ask for money i want the i want the stage time you know so right and like i'll make a vlog for free out of it too so it's a win-win situation so that's, a, it says a lot for working for free honestly you're just gonna get the experience and exposure so it's awesome that's so exciting and that's in camden right i'm looking it up yeah, right now that's that's in between on a battleship Holy it's shit. In, be- in between um izu and lost lands so like september cool. is just totally booked for me oh well, I that's how, so exciting. i don't know how i'm gonna have a job <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I, I somehow i somehow manage yeah well i mean i think it's just gonna keep from here i think you're gonna keep being busy and honestly i think you deserve all this success you know you're gonna have a lot of fun things coming up thank, thank you for coming on here of course Where can thank people you for find having you me too i want to plug your socials you guys can find me at izu that's the next place you could see me if you want to find me on the internet you could find me at <laughs> the festival finesse on youtube you can find me at the festival finesse on facebook you can find me at festival finesse official on instagram and you can find me as brian on twitter that skater brian perfect awesome thank you so much i'm excited to see you at izu you too emma thank you for having Have a me good one. i will see you at the zoo all right bye bye all right you guys thank you so much to brian the festival finesser for coming on today i hope you guys enjoyed that it was so much fun talking to him seriously i'm so glad we got to cover so many different topics um he's got such a cool perspective and again it's been really cool to see his growth i think there's so many exciting things coming up for him so definitely check him out on youtube look for him at a music festival um we'll we'll definitely try and arrange something at izu because we're going to be there the same day so maybe we'll try and like organize something together so we can meet all of you guys together that would be awesome but yeah look for him in the crowd go check out his youtube channel check him out on instagram if you guys are local to the area for sure try and go to one of his shows or one of the upcoming ones that he's been planning with uh the mosh queen brie um yeah definitely go out and support i think it was really fun to have his perspective on the mosh bits that have been happening in the edm scene Uh, i hope you guys enjoy hearing from people on the podcast here with different perspectives with different stories um i really really enjoy talking to people from all different types of backgrounds with different musical interests and it's just been so cool like learning about these people a little bit more um, because you might see them online you might see them on YouTube but I personally enjoy getting to know them and sharing their story which is like why I wanted to have this platform to have other he's not really a raver he would get mad at me for calling him a raver but other people in this community um, to share their stories and their experiences and yeah I just want to introduce more and more people Um, to the podcast fam here. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, Please send in again any feedback or future episode suggestions that you guys have, topics you want me to cover. You can email me at raveculturecast at gmail.com, raveculturecast at gmail.com. Again, you guys can always um, follow me on social media at Emma Capotis or at raveculturecast on Instagram and Twitter. I'm always posting like polls and questionnaires for future episodes because I want to get your input. Uh, Again, you guys can send me voice memos if you want. I'm happy to include them on the podcast. And again, uh, suggestions of people you want me to have conversations with on here. I would love to talk to like people from all different backgrounds. Uh, It doesn't just have to be ravers. It can be people who own companies. It can be artists. Like I will try and get whoever I can on here. 
Um, and again, thank you for spreading the word, you guys. Please screenshot and share this episode. Tell a friend today. Send a link to somebody that you think would be interested in this topic, and let's just continue to grow this family. Uh, it's seriously been so incredible. You guys can rate and review us on iTunes if you'd like to do that. And again, I hope to see you at Electric Zoo or at Imagine Music Festival or another show or festival coming up. We'll see. I'm planning my fall schedule, guys. I'm gonna try. I'm telling you guys, you're hearing it first here. I'm trying for a, another fall festival, but I cannot announce anything yet because nothing is set in stone. <laughs> but I'm working on something. So yeah, stay tuned. A lot of really exciting announcements and partnerships coming up, you guys. Um, so again, you can follow me on YouTube if you want to check out the video. I'm posting videos now on, on my channel so you guys can watch along with me there. And I think that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for checking out this week's episode. I will be back next Wednesday with a new one. Peace.